There are so many homeowners out there who are upside down on their homes and don't know what to do. This morning, we're laying out their options. Good morning, my name is Barry Horvath and this is Moving Forward TV, your local real estate and mortgage update. And I am Delyn Gaston. Thanks for joining us this morning. On this morning's show, we are bringing on Steve Bartlett, who is a prominent attorney in the area, who has helped us as part of our team negotiate many a short sale, fight foreclosures for many of our clients, and gotten things done very smoothly, quickly, and efficiently. And he's here to share how that's done. I'm excited about him being here today. I am too, I am this too. This should be very interesting. Thanks, Steve, for joining us on our show today. Thanks for having me, Barry. Delenn, it's Thank great to be here. Thank you. All right, before we get into this, let's talk about the numbers right now. What's going on in the Bay Area in the real estate market? The numbers are good. Actually, the numbers are improving over what we've had in the past. Right. But right now, in Hillsborough County, there's about almost 10,000 properties for sale with over 35% still short sales. Pinellas, almost 12,000 for sale, with over 19% of them being short sales. And Hernando and Pasco are actually the worst right now, with over 55% being either REO or short sales, meaning foreclosure or short sales. So wow. there's a lot of homeowners that are distressed out there and upside down. A lot of people who don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. Because I think, quite frankly, and, and I think another thing that you had mentioned um, in the break, that there's a lot of people who um, are, are not putting their houses on the market because they don't know what to do. They don't know which direction to go for. Our, our inventory, and you realtors out there know this, the inventory is down right now. There's, there, I know a lot of realtors who have been saying lately, I need listings, I need listings. So, and I think the inventory could probably go up. People are afraid because with a short sale, they don't know what to do. Whether it's gonna be a short sale or a foreclosure or whatever, there's so many people who, they're like an ostrich sticking their head in the sand, I think, they don't know what to do. So that's why we wanted to have Steve on the show. Steve, maybe clarify for people out there what their options are. What, what options do they have? Well, unfortunately, Michael Phelps isn't the only American who's currently underwater. Right. So many homeowners in this country are just dying in debt. Their homes are worth a lot less than what they paid for. They owe more on the mortgage than what they can get if they tried to sell the property. Now, fortunately, there's a lot of different options that people can actually try to utilize. The one that most people would like and prefer if they can is to try to refinance their home, try to get another mortgage if, they're, if their interest rate's too high. Right now, mortgage rates are very low, and if a person qualifies, that's their best option. And there's programs for that, but not everyone, as you said, can qualify for those programs. Right. As you know, the banks used to play games, but the federal government has begun to come down and, and mandate that banks right. start actually lending money to people. Right. But not everyone is going to be able to refinance or restructure their loan. Right. Okay, uh, if the bank's not willing to modify your loan, then you have some other options. The best one right now for most people is to do a short sale. Okay. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't know what a short sale is. We all know because this is the business we do. But what a short sale is, is getting permission from the bank to be able to sell your home for less than what you owe in the mortgage. And what happens is the bank will then be willing to eat the remainder that you owe in the mortgage. So let's say you owe... Uh, $150,000 on your house and you can only sell it for 100000 the bank gives you permission to sell it and the bank forgives that, f that final $50,000 of debt. If you lose your home to a foreclosure, then the bank has a right because Florida is a recourse state, the bank has a right to sue you for that extra $50,000 and they can have a judgment that will follow you for 20 years. Uh, with interest that you're never going to be able to get rid of. So your credit will be shot, you won't be able to buy another house, and you'll have this judgment against you. If you do the short sale, you won't have that deficiency judgment. Steve, can I ask you a question? Sure. What about the Mortgage Forgiveness and Debt Relief Act of 2007? Okay, well, what Congress did back in 2007 is to pass a law to give tax protection to people who are getting their home either modified or lose their home to foreclosure or to a short sale. And what this does is it forgives the tax consequences of the bank for giving that debt. Under the law, if 
somebody forgives debt to you, that forgiveness of the debt is considered to be income. So in other words, if you borrow $50,000 from somebody and the person says, ah, you don't have to pay me back, well, Uncle Sam's going to send you a tax bill for $50,000 for that forgiveness of the debt. Under this statute that went into effect in 2007, until December 31st, 2012, any debt that is forgiven on your homestead property is tax-free. You don't get hit with that tax bill that you would normally do. But at the end of 2012, that law is going to be no longer in effect unless it gets renewed. Right now, the word is that it's currently uh, just passed a Senate subcommittee with both Republicans and Democrats supporting it, and it's supposed to be going to a vote later in September for the whole Senate. But unless it passes by December 31st, so there's no guarantee of that, the, bill is going, the law is going to expire, and people will start getting taxed on the forgiven debt. Um, so it's very important that people, if they are thinking about doing a short sale, at least start the process now, because there's no guarantee that that's going to be available next year. Right. That could be a huge tax burden for a lot of people who are upside down. That's a great point. Right. right. And what happens is you still get the 1099, but if you file a 982, it waives the tax responsibility for that forgiven debt. Okay. All right. So we talked about um, option one. They can try and work with their existing lender or refinance possibly into one of these government programs like that are available the, Like these the days. HARP loan, like which we HARP talked loans, about in the past. We, right. Uh, option two, they could short sale their home. You've talked about that. The third option, obviously, some people are walking away and the house is going into foreclosure or they've gotten so far behind that they can't catch it up. Tell us what, what do, does the person who is close to foreclosure or in foreclosure have any options? Well, some people have heard on television some national spokesperson saying you should just walk away. But that's only a good option if you're in a state which has non-recourse mortgages. So if you walk away, there's no deficiency of judgment against you. So if you walk away from the mortgage, they can't sue you for the balance. But Florida's not like that. Walking away is the worst thing that you can actually do. Plus, ethically, if you walk away from your mortgage, it lowers the real estate values for your community, and you're actually hurting your neighbors as well as hurting your own credit. However, unfortunately, many of the clients that I represent who are trying to do a short sale are also already in foreclosure. Um, and what's important is that you have to fight the foreclosure at the same time you're trying to um, negotiate the short sale. And unfortunately, the bank has many different branches and due to the bureaucracy, they don't communicate with each other. So while you're fighting the foreclosure with the legal department of the bank, you're trying to negotiate a short sale and they don't communicate with each other. And often, imagine that if, <laughs> if you don't have an attorney, and only an attorney can fight to defend your foreclosure action, you can run out of time, lose your home to an auction, because yeah. you haven't been able to get approval for the short sale. So it's very important to have a team together that can fight the foreclosure to buy you time to work out either a refinance or restructure of your loan or a short sale. Now, there is one other option that people can use if they are about to lose their home. Let's say they've already reached a point called summary judgment and the home is even set for an auction. A person at that time can file something called a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. What a Chapter 13 bankruptcy does is it allows a person to keep their home. What it will do is whatever you owe on the mortgage, you will have five years to make a payment plan and you start paying it back through the federal bankruptcy court. Unfortunately, they're not able to restructure your loan or forgive any of your past um, mortgage obligations. They can't basically do a refinance through the bankruptcy right. court. But they it will stop that. the foreclosure. It will stop the foreclosure in its tracks. In fact, Amazing. let's say there was That's an good. auction. Let's say your mm -hmm. house is set for auction. And it's on the courthouse steps. Are you wishing and this they had, on me now? <laughs> and they had the gavel, and they're about to hit the gavel and make the auction final, and you say, oh, suggestion of bankruptcy? It stops. It causes a timeout. All lawsuits, all foreclosures, all auctions, everything stops while you're in bankruptcy. It's been court. a long time since I've been in timeout. I don't know about you, Dwayne. <laughs> now, another thing that's important to realize is that when a person files a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, they can always file a voluntary dismissal. So if during the time you're trying to come up with a plan to try to save your home, 
and you're unable to do that, and instead you're able to finally get the approval for a short sale, you can always dismiss that bankruptcy so you don't have a bankruptcy against your record, and you can just use the bankruptcy court to buy you enough time and breathing room so you can get your affairs in order. So we can figure out the best plan for someone. Yes. So what, like I said before, let me reiterate, the important thing is to have a, a team, a team that can get all the ducks in a row so that all the paperwork is all done so that an attorney who's fighting the foreclosure and is looking to see whether or not a bankruptcy is the best option is also supervising the people who are negotiating for the short sale or the refinance or the restructuring of the loan so that everyone's on the same page. Right. A lot of people um, were being ripped off by some people who were advertising that they could do um, loan modifications. Right. And they weren't telling people that their home is in foreclosure and they need to hire another attorney to, to represent them on that. And Florida actually passed a law making it illegal for companies to take fees up front from citizens who are trying to refinance their homes or trying to get a loan modification. Modifications, right, right. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there who aren't really credible and it's important to also have a team that has experience dealing on a one-to-one -one relationship with the banks so that I know a lot of people have problems getting the royal runaround when they're trying to communicate with the banks themselves versus somebody who has everybody's name and number already in the Rolodex. Right. So obviously having people with the experience who, who already know the people who come up with the approvals for the short sales is very important. So foreclosure is definitely the worst option. And Delin right. and I have seen that on the mortgage side. Recovery, recovery yeah. after somebody, you know, having having these options and your your options are limited. This is it. What Steve just laid out, that's pretty much it. Those are your only options. So don't stick your head in the sand. If you need to do something, you need to call someone and say, okay, I'm going to do this, this, or at least talk so that we can kind of go over the options for you. Just whatever you do, don't hide from it. We can help you with also the recovery afterward and how to get kind of back on track. That's why Steve's a part of our team. Right, the worst thing you can do is just to put your head in the sand and play right. ostrich and pretend the problem isn't there. The problem is not going to go away. And if you do a short sale and you start working the problem now, the end results are going to be better for you. You're going to be able to reestablish your credit. You're going to be able to buy another home. But if you just let it go to foreclosure, it's going to haunt you forever. And there's still incentive money out there for people who short sale from these banks. So people can actually get paid to short sale their home. To get them started again. And don't they also have relocation sure. costs? Absolutely. Right. So, you know. A lot of good options for you. You just have to pick up the phone and we can guide you in the right direction. A couple of weeks ago, we did a show about closing delays and some of the things that cause closing delays. After that, Gil and I were having a conversation about some of the things that he's been running into in the field. So I asked him to stop by, share with us some things that potentially could cause some closing delays or even for new homeowners cause some issues. Yeah, one of the things we find out when someone buys a house and they're trying to get insurance or a loan on the house, they do an appraisal and they see right. what the new stuff has been taken care of, like if it's a new roof or new AC. Well, then they research the property, which is public access for anybody buying a new house. Right. They can check on public records in that county. And if they don't have a permit or something like that, they have to bring it up to code. So it could delay a sale of the house, it could delay a bank loan or anything like that. And uh, a lot of these people are hiring these unlicensed contractors, which are doing this stuff to save money. But in turn, you can be fined up to five thousand dollars for hiring an unlicensed contract. And all you this can be sued for yeah. for hiring the unlicensed contractor. Yep. So you could potentially get ripped off by the unlicensed contractor, yep. get poor work done, no permit, and get get fined yep. on top of that. Wow! All that stuff's public record. I mean, they have warning Kinda notices like those and all that. cameras on yep. traffic lights. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's all it's all public knowledge. Everything's re done on um, computer and stuff like that now. Everything's registered. I mean, people aren't getting their ten year warranty. They're not. I mean, there's so many things that affect it, and the price just escalate. They think they're saving money, but they're really not. Wow. So the people who are, and and you were saying also people who have already bought the house. Not only, you know, beforehand sometimes it can cause delays, but if somebody put an addition on a house or something like that and didn't have permits done. They assume the responsibility. They bought it uh, as is. Now they're responsible. So if they get stopped for something or they check the house and there wasn't like a code enforcement, they can actually have to bring their unit up to code. And a lot of these houses, they have these old R22 units that were put in. You can buy them, but they don't meet ARI ratings 
bored. They're not the new 410. You can't pull a permit on them. So that means they have to put a whole new system in again. <gasps> so, I mean, it can get costly on several different fronts. Oh, my gosh. That could be, yeah, that could, that could really put, it, put a dent in your budget, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah, especially when you just put your money down in the house and just bought it. Oh. Some very important things to keep in mind as you're either buying a house, you know, before you close, make sure in your home inspections that you've done your homework and you've made sure the previous homeowner has pulled the proper permits to get those things done. One other thing is always check your contractor out and all that. Sometimes you have a contract, they do pull permits, mm -hmm. but they don't close them out. That is also another flag. So okay. you want to make sure your permit is closed out and satisfied so it's done right. Ah, so what should, what should they do in that because case? Is that something they can find in public records as yep, well? You can pull the records of your house that you're buying or you live at. Okay. And then it'll show you that a permit is open or you can check with the county and you need to make sure that permit is closed out. Sometimes, hopefully you have a receipt and go back to the original contractor and say, hey, you need to do your job right. The only problem is we see a lot of permits that are over a year old. Well, now it falls into the new code. Well, the new code means <gasps> you have to upgrade everything. So, although the job might be done, they never closed the permit, now right. it has to be redone or upgraded or something. Yep. Talk about delays that can happen. And this yep. is on any type of um, workmanship at the house that needed a, required a permit yep. to be done. Um, AC. Not just the big stuff. Yeah, AC, roof, a uh, front door, uh, windows, um, anything like that. People even, don't realize Even a fence it. sometimes, and depends on the neighborhood or the city. Needs it. Good stuff to keep in mind. Steve, thanks so much for coming today. I mean, just amazing how much information you provided in this short show. And I know you're busy, and I appreciate your time and sharing this with our consumers. People it's desperately really need this. Clarified, you know, the options here, which is a great thing. Well, it's really important. I mean, all we could do is just basically touch on the things today. But if anyone has any questions, just give me a call. Give right. you guys a call. We could answer anybody's questions that you may have. We have we have a link to Steve's website right down at the bottom, his phone number and everything. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to pick up the phone and give him a call. He's a wealth of information, as you know. We're also here if we can do anything for you. Steve is also part of our team over here as our team members. They help us get all of our transactions done, whether Absolutely. it's new loan closing, short sales, um, foreclosure uh, defense, things like that. Everybody here helps us, and I know that they can help you too. So pick up the phone, give us a call. Also, we're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of those as well. Share this on your social network as well. We are today and every day. Moving forward. Thanks. We'll see everybody next week.